Before we get into this video, I wanted to let you guys know that it's sponsored by CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is an amazing documentary subscription service with over 2000 titles that are all about widening our understanding. If you like true crime, just like I do, you're gonna love Murder, She Solved, which is all about women who solve mysteries. Now, the coolest thing about getting a subscription to CuriosityStream is that it comes bundled with Nebula, which is another subscription service that is all about giving independent creators just like myself a chance to create the content that they can't quite create on YouTube. If you're interested in CuriosityStream, you're in luck because right now they're running a promotion for 42% off of an annual membership of both CuriosityStream and Nebula. And this offer is valid to the 24th of January. All you need to do is go to curiositystream.com slash catblack and put in the code catblack and check out to get the discount. Anyway, on to this episode. So can we talk about something? I randomly decided to look up an old friend, Ariel Scarcella. Forever ago, I had a little bit of an interaction with Ariel Scarcella. And the, th the funny thing looking back on that now is that back then when I was first starting to have these conversations with Ariel Scarcella about whether or not she is or isn't transphobic, people were still questioning that. People were still wondering whether or not she um, was transphobic or not. A lot of the way that I approached her was with this sort of understanding and belief that, you know, maybe she just doesn't know any better. Fast forward today, um, I've not watched one of her videos in a really, 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 really long time. But the other day when I looked her up, there were just like nonstop, like obviously transphobic videos. But you know what? I've learned that we can't judge videos on, you know, their title. So I wanted to take a look at some of these videos. Do I want to watch this autogynophilia video? Autogynophilia is one of those, 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 those tricky things because the most that I can understand people are upset about with autogynophilia is some trans women look like men and also want to sleep with women. That's like me really over summarizing it is like, it seems like the people that they label autogynophilic are generally like trans women who don't pass, who also want to sleep with women. I don't know. I just, uh, I hate the, the conversation because like so much of it is like, okay, but this trans girl isn't like hot. So like she has to be an auto guy to feel. I am a man who is sexually attracted to myself as a female. Sexually attracted to myself. As a female. I'm gonna put it in opposite. I wanna be right. sexually attracted to myself as a male. As a male, right. There's no way. We're now at a place in society where people are calling themselves trans women without even trying to pass as female, without even being feminine, honestly. So this is a video that she's making with, I'm, I'm gonna assume, a trans woman. And this trans woman is clearly a trans woman who's had lots of surgeries. She puts on a lots of makeup. She does the whole thing. How to say this. You could be a man who fetishizes looking like a feminine woman to, to, to such a degree that you do feminize yourself in a way where you do look like a beautiful, glamorous woman. I've met a handful of cross-dressers who are quite literally straight men who fetishize the, the image of themselves dressed as women, who look great, who have no problem looking feminine, have no problem passing even. That's not like a measurement of what is and isn't autogynephilia. If we're trying to pretend this is a real thing, wouldn't being a really beautiful, passable woman be part of it? And I'm, I've noticed that they've got, um, I, I, I don't, I want to say this person's name is Jacob Tobiah. Yeah, it's Jacob Tobiah. Do they identify as a trans woman? I didn't know that actually. They go by she, they pronouns. There's no like, I'm a trans woman declaration that I can see anywhere. So I'm kind of confused what the point of having them as the thumbnail is. Is it because they're a person with a beard and I don't understand. And yes, there's a word for that. And that word is autogynophila. We have Dr. Ray. Not even saying it right. Autogynophila. Autogynophila. Yep, it's autogynophila. Blanchard here to explain exactly what that is. And after you watch the short explanation, oh. me and a trans woman friend of mine, Jana, are going to react to a video of a- So I, again, this is shit that I, don't, I haven't fully researched, but to my understanding, a lot of the person who came up with this term autogynophilia, a lot of what this person is, could be describing as their own cross-dressing fetish, which frankly, I have observed quite a bit. There are quite a few men who are cross-dressers who get off on the vision of them as women. Like that is very common. Um, those people don't usually 
transition though. That's that's the thing is usually those people, they don't want to transition. They enjoy this idea of making themselves feminine and creating tableaus of themselves as feminine people, um, as like the woman that they would like to have sex with. That's a thing, but I don't know if it's a thing with trans women as much as it might be with men who cross dress, but he's going to explain it. So let's, let's, let's get mansplained, I guess. I invented the word autogonophilia to refer to a man's tendency to be sexually aroused at the thought or image of himself as a woman. It's somewhat similar in meaning to the older term fetishistic transvestism. I invented the new word for a variety of reasons. One reason was that the word transvestism historically had been applied to various kinds of cross-dressers, including gay drag queens. True. Another reason is that some autogonophiles are aroused at the idea of inhabiting a woman's body, not at the idea of inhabiting a woman's clothes. It's generally possible for people to have more than one sexual interest. Besides being attracted to the idea of being a woman, autogonophiles are also attracted to real women in the external world. These different sexual interests get amalgamated into- Who are these like random people? Okay, Jessica Yaniv is a creep. Um, okay, but who is like these random people? It's like they're just showing people who are not ways. So, feminine in passing. <laughs> some autogonophiles combine the desire. Whoa, now they're pulling off people's fucking Tinder images. Wow, okay, that's kind of shitty. To be a woman and the desire to have a woman in the fantasy of being a lesbian. People are sometimes confused about the relationship between autogonophilia and gender dysphoria, which I will refer to for- So now they're like showing pictures of like people who have listed themselves as trans women who are very, very masculine in appearance. And they're saying that these people are autogynophilia, feel, have autogynophilia based on literally nothing more than them looking overtly masculine and labeling themselves as trans women simplicity as transsexualism autogonophilia and trans like why this is just there's just slide after slide after slide of like trans person who they've never met don't have any idea who they are on a dating app just not passing it's kind of shitty <laughs> Sexualism are not mutually exclusive. Some autogonophiles become severely gender dysphoric, some become mildly gender dysphoric, and others don't become gender dysphoric at all. Gender dysphoric autogonophiles and gender dysphoric homosexuals converge on the request for sex reassignment. They may seem similar when they present with this request, and they may actually be helped by the same treatments, but they start out from very different places. Sexual orientations, within which I would include autogonophilia, gender dysphoria are obviously different things, but it is mistaken to say they are unrelated. Gender dysphoria is virtually what? always either preceded- What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I promise you, like, when I first started recognizing dysphoria, dick was never even close to on my mind. ...or accompanied by some variant sexual orientation, either homosexuality or autogynophilia. Hey guys, I am here with the... I mean, you will inherently, as a trans person, be in a position where your sexuality will be complex because you are a trans person. Whether you're a trans person who's attracted to men or a trans person who's attracted to women, you're going to have a complex sexual um, experience because you factor into the world in a very unique way. I don't know. I don't understand what that is supposed to mean. Beautiful. Jana. what do you do? So this is supposed to be like the non auto kind of file because she's like pretty. What do you talk about on your page? Um, I mean, mostly you just post about how hot you are. Right, yeah, I don't have a... Which is what women do. That's that's what a woman would do all the time, is talk about how hot they are, because that's not demeaning at all to a woman's image and definition. And it's very interesting. Like, to me, it would seem sort of sexist to, to describe a woman's experience as one dedicated to hyperfemininity. 
it's just kind of weird to me. And you're presenting her as the non autogynophile in this 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 video. And the reason for this is, I guess, because she's hot and she, I'm ass- I'm gonna assume, is attracted to men. I am sexually aroused at the thought or image uh, of myself as a female. Example, uh, a more common form of autogynophilia would be a man's dressing up as a female, anatomical, where you sort of imagine or you pretend you have a certain feature, for example, breasts, big ass or whatever. How is this different from being a trans woman? We, uh... You mean you're not sexually I, turned on by yourself? No, no, not at <laughs> Not that all. I'm shaming this guy, like, for, like let I'm him get not. his kicks, whatever. Very weird to be sexually attracted to yourself. That would just be, like, me saying, I really want to have a 12-inch dick. Okay, but, like, is it weird being attracted to yourself when you're straight? Or is it weird being attracted to yourself when you're gay? Because, I don't know, like, to me, this is what makes this conversation so weird. Like, Okay, like I don't look at myself and like get horny or whatever, you know. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but I also don't feel that way because I like am not into women. <laughs> like, I, 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 I'm very much not attracted to women. I might if I was. To me, that's that's w- partially where the conversation falls apart a little bit because it's like, have y'all seen like a gay couple? Like so frequently, it's not two people who look completely different. Like so frequently, it's like, are they siblings? Or are they partners? You know? Um, so I don't know. Like, that, that's what I mean when, when I said that, like, the concept of it feels kind of homophobic. Because, like, I don't know. It's hella common for gay people to look alike and date each other. You don't turn yourself on by transitioning or doing it right. anything at all. So Right. So what is why, why do trans women and trans men transition? For people that don't know. No, trans women and trans men transition to alleviate gender their gender dysphoria. dysphoria. What yeah. autogynophilia is has nothing to do with feeling a different gender. <laughs> it's fucking killing me that she's calling it autogynophilia. <laughs> I, I love it because like, like he said it really clearly and I feel like I've everyone's been saying autogynophilia like very clearly, but like autogynophilia. Autogynophilia. I love it. <laughs> like it doesn't turn you on no. now that you transition it just makes you feel whole right right makes you feel complete like this is who i was supposed to be right. i mean i've always been whole period yeah yes but, yes but, we love but, that i fucking love that you said I that down in any way shape or form see this is another thing like rl is cool with this trans person because this trans person isn't into women when i think of like the trans people that she's had issues with it's almost always been like a trans person who's interested in women when i think of like the trans people who he, who she's been close to it's been trans women who are into men you know um <laughs> i don't know it's it's just uh eh. The reason I want to talk about this, though, in a video is because I think more people are what this person is than what you are. What? And what? Uh, and and what to what basis do you have that? Like, again, like earlier in the video, she just showed several different like dating profile pictures of like people who label themselves as trans women who looked very masculine. How the fuck does that at all like... Ooh, how to say this? All right, let's break this, this. Let's let's like talk about this for a second, okay? Because this is part of what what I hate about this conversation. So, transitioning is very very fucking expensive. Transitioning is incredibly fucking expensive. Um, it's not something that most people are going to be able to do within the first couple of months of recognizing that they're transgender. And you know, I'm just clicking through Joanna's Instagram, like. This is very clearly a person who, like, lives a life of privilege. You know what I mean? At least that's what the image she's putting off. Let's just put it that way. Certain trans girls can, within the first couple of months, you know, get their surgeries done and, like, get everything situated. Some people can't. If someone's lived most of their life presenting as a hyper-masculine male, Believe me when I say that going from that to where Joanna's at is going to be a, 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 an uphill battle in so many fucking ways. And so someone not passing yet or not being hyper feminine yet doesn't mean that they're not um, actually their gender. And that seems to be the measurement here. Joanna is hot and sexy and she's got all her fucking surgeries done and, and all this other shit. So therefore she's a true trans person. But this other person who, you know, 
um, doesn't look feminine and up, you know, to their standards is not valid. That's not how you measure that. Even if we are measuring like this autogynephilia shit. That's not how you measure that. And honestly, I think there are a lot of men, and I'm not misgendering anybody, this is a man, there are a lot of men that are on lesbian dating apps or just regular dating apps and they'll dress like women, which is also kind of offensive, right? You can't dress right, like a woman. Right. They'll like put on terrible makeup and whatever the hell and they'll call themselves lesbians. And I'm like- and What I can't help notice is a striking difference between somebody who is male and has autogynephilia and somebody like me who is born female and is a transsexual. I don't, for example, ever feel aroused at the thought of being a man. I don't ever look in the mirror and get aroused because I'm a man. And I definitely don't feel that it was a force behind why I've transitioned. A lot of trans activists will deny that. But who said, I'm just gonna need, I'm just gonna need more people like, like watching all of these videos, like who's saying this though? Like, how are you determining that somebody's an autogynephile? Like how? I'm just gonna like, maybe we'll get to it, but like, I need like a person who's transitioned saying that they're an autogynephile. That autogynephilia is actually real. Yet here we have somebody who is explaining it in a very detailed manner. And I can't help wonder how many of these trans activists today are maybe in denial of autogynephilia being real because they too have autogynephilia. Whether it's before or after. Ah! What a perfect like trap. It's like, if you don't agree with their assessment, it's because you're the autogyne. <laughs> I think that this thing they're describing is very, very real amongst cross-dressed men. And I think that there's a lot of that in there. And I think that for some people, there's a crossover a little bit. Like, so I remember when I was looking at hormones really early on, um, I remember looking in um, on these like Yahoo groups. Oh my God, y'all are, this is how old I am. It's, we used to get our <laughs> HRT information from Yahoo groups. But I do remember that there were some people in there that were very clearly men who had a fetish who were wanting to privately take HRT meds to get some sort of sexual kick. I remember one of the big things was um, if your progesterone is like super high, you can start lactating, right? Um, and there are some people who that is a part of their fe fetish is like they will make themselves lactate and that is part of it. So I'm not saying that there aren't like people who go that far. Um, it just seems strange to like point at specific trans people and be like, this person has autogynephilia simply because they're not hyper feminine. Where, where exactly do you get this? If not your weird, like tracking of other people's gender expressions. And what does it mean that you're, that you're, you're bringing out this trans woman who's hyper feminine, right? Who obviously performs femininity in this like over, exaggerated way what does it mean when you're saying this person's an actual woman like i'm sitting here no fucking makeup i mean i had like I had some of this on earlier and it's gone but like am i not am i an autogynephile because i'm not wearing makeup right now am i an autogynephile because i'm not wearing a fucking bra right now like like what are we talking about like, right there are so many people like him hundreds that i see on lesbian dating apps so they're just like, like you you it's not a sexual so the part of the problem is is that yes straight men yes <laughs> like all my lesbian friends always tell me that like straight men do not stay the fuck off of lesbian dating apps like like and i will always hear that because i just i hate the fact that my my friends who are lesbians who want to be with other women cannot go on a fucking dating app without finding a fucking unicorn hunter or some straight dude pretending to be a woman who's trying to get, you know, that's very much a thing in real. What does that have to do with trans people though? We're talking about autogynephilia, but we're not really talking about like, we're not really talking about it. Straight men or non-passing trans women on lesbian sites does not conclude person who enjoys looking at themselves as a woman who sexually gets off on the image of themselves as a woman these things aren't i don't know am i just not twitch chat am i making sense because to me it's like i'm trying hard to understand what there's what where they're coming from but i just keep hearing 
ugly trans women who don't pass shouldn't be on dating apps. Like straight up people that have beards, like full beards with a, I'm not kidding, calling themselves lesbians. And I'm like, okay, like you're not feminine in any sense of the word. Okay, and then here's another thing. Here's another fucking thing. I shouldn't I shouldn't say this. I shouldn't do this, but look at these two women. Okay? If we're going to play this stupid game of femininity, look at these two women holding the trans activism erases lesbians. Would feminine be a way that you would describe either of these people? I probably wouldn't use those terms personally. You can. I wouldn't. Not necessarily. You know? So, what what are you really trying to... What argument are you really trying to make here? Do you know what I mean? Like, if these women who are standing up against a trans mob or whatever are women and are on your side... Here, here are two people who are going to be clearly hurt by your 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 subtle you know communication that women have to be feminine to be women. I don't know. I don't know. Like I'm just, it's not totally making sense to me. Why are you using someone's femininity as a a, a measurement of whether or not they actually are a lesbian? Like, obviously, I understand that the conversation shifts for you because you're. Um, having a conversation about trans women. So if a person's trans, they have to be hyper feminine. But but I don't know if feminine would be a way that I would describe quite a few women who ID as lesbians. So like, what are we talking about here? What is the argument you're actually trying to make here? Because I understand what she's trying to do. It's kind of a both sider thing. Like I don't hate all trans people. Here's one of the good ones. But but she's feminine, and you're you're cajoling these trans women for not being feminine. And yet the women who you're claiming to stand up for and defend are not people who would probably be considered feminine. Like obviously not all, but like a lot of, a lot of lesbian women, a lot of gender critical folks, especially um, are not particularly feminine. So it's weird to me to listen to somebody like, almost use femininity as a, 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 a measurement for whether or not someone actually is a woman. Because I don't think that's what we're, I don't know. The, the, the message is muddled is what I'm trying to say. Like if you're not actually experiencing gender dysphoria, if you haven't made any changes at all, in my opinion, don't call yourself a lesbian. Like if you're at least trying to or live trans. or trans. Yeah. Like if you're actually, if you're trying to socially live as you know, the gender you identify as, I would more than happily call you. I would never in a million years call you a gay man. You don't live life as a gay man. You don't look like a gay man. Thank you. You don't. Thank you. Like, honestly, don't. you don't. Ah, like, so, you are- this is literally all it boils down to. It's like, okay, you don't like look like a man. So like you're valid. Like, okay. It's, that's really what it is. Like, it's just that. It's just that, which again, has nothing to do with autogynephilia. If you're measuring autogynephilia by appearance, that you're missing the fucking point. Because autogynephilia is not defined by, well, this person makes me physically uncomfortable because they're not feminine enough. It's literally about a man sexually getting off on the image of himself as a woman. Doesn't mean the image of himself as an ugly woman, as a masculine woman, as a woman who doesn't pass as a cis woman, as a woman, which means that an autogynophile can look any fucking way. So why, why are you continuing to go back on this point of, well, I would never call you a gay man. You're clearly not, um, a man or whatever, because you're feminine and you've transitioned. What does that have to do with autogynophilia? What does that have to do? Like, first of all, you had the guy who coined the term call in and give him the definition of the term. Why aren't you using that to determine if somebody's an autogynophile? Clearly, this guy who's talking about autogynophilia has autogynophilia, but that's a dude who doesn't identify as a trans woman. He said that he had confusion around his gender at some point, but he never said that he was a trans woman. He never said that he transitioned and then detransitioned because autogynophilia. I, I guess if you wanted to make that argument, maybe you should have found that video. These people that are autogynophilic and not actual trans women talk differently to ah. other women. 
Is that right? Yes. Is that they right? Talk like men. I'll give you an example. Is Let's that just right? say somebody, like a trans woman, hits on me in a dating app and, like, hey girl, whatever, you're cute. Da, da, da. Let's just say I said, oh, I'm not interested, whatever. I, whatever. I feel like a woman, trans or cis, whatever, would be like, okay, like whatever. Or they'd be a little passive, passive aggressive about it, right. like, whatever. Da, da, da. Then, like, talk shit. Wait, but if which trans. Which trans women are hitting on you, though, Ariel? Like, this, this is what I want to know. Like, at this point, which trans women are going up to you on a dating app and hitting on you? I just, I just want to know because it just who's 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 flirting with you? Which trans people are hitting on you? Because it doesn't quite track for me, at least on Instagram or something. But a guy would be like, fuck you. Da, 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 da. Right. Like, like that is so that's a man, man thing. A it's man a man thing. thing. These people that give give me shit for talking about these types of people are these types of people. They're not trans women. And in my mind, too, being trans is definitely a mental thing. Like, I wasn't supposed to be born this way. Like, this isn't yeah. what was supposed to happen. It's literally not as common as people nowadays like to think it is. Not all. Or what, yeah. they, what their definition of trans is. It's like, no, when you're trans, you know it. Like he said, from like five years old. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up and go and check out Jonna's Instagram. I hate when I watch a video and I sit here and I think I could have made this video <laughs> because it's it's weird. Like I feel like Ariel had the basis for a good video. She had the guy who created the term call in. You know, she had a, a trans person sitting with her. But, like, everything else in the video, like, lacks fucking substance. Like, lesbian dating apps being filled with men is a real fucking issue. It makes these apps unappealing, you know? Like, like here's the thing. Like, and I think... Ugh, how to say this without sound, um, stepping on toes... There is a real need for lesbians to have an app where they can only fucking talk to lesbians. That's a real fucking th need because these apps, all of them, even or and especially the ones that are specifically created for women who are trying to seek other women, tend to be overrun with men who are pretending to be women or are trying to get a woman into the bed with them and their wife. There are so many fucking unicorn hunters on these fucking apps. If I get them, I promise you lesbians get them so much more and all of my friends tell me as much. The, the issue of men using women's profiles to speak to women who are interested in women is a real fucking problem. A problem that I don't know really has much to do with trans women. I could be wrong. A problem that I don't know really has to do with fucking autogynephilia. I don't know what these pieces of this video had to do with each other. That's that's kind of what, what, where I'm landing with this. It's like, all of these things probably were like a basis for a good video, but none of them I think proved the point that she was trying to prove, which is that this is such a widespread issue that is overtaking America. There's an issue of men using dating apps made for women who are interested in women, for sure. You can't define those trans women as autogynophiles by the fact that they're using those dating apps while not looking feminine enough. You really can't define autogynophilia in that way. You'd probably have to have a couple of conversations with someone to understand whether or not they had autogynophilia, right? Um, if we are accepting it as a real thing, right? Um, all of this kind of boiled down to was I don't think trans women who don't tra who don't physically transition quickly enough for me are actually trans. Like that's what that's what I got out of off of it. The thumbnail is a picture of Jacob Tobias, somebody who doesn't identify as a trans woman, just is a person who is feminine who has not shaved their facial hair. Like I hate when I look at shit like this because it's like you got it's like. <laughs> The, the narrative is very constructed. The narrative is very deliberately constructed in a very specific way to tell a specific story. And it just feels very dishonest. It feels so dishonest, but for some reason people love it. Like this video has 112,000 views, right? Like Ariel Scarcella is not getting becoming a smaller creator. She's becoming a larger creator. Like her, her going off in this different direction um, has not hurt her, has only helped her. 
it has in fact given her a whole new audience. And, you know, there's part of me that doubts some of it, but I, I feel like she very much is a person who believes in what she's saying here. I think that like, she's not really doing her due diligence with some of these videos. Like the fact that she said, auto kind of filler. Like, it's like a concept that she read quickly. Like, <laughs> it's like she had that conversation. She had that sit down with that trans woman watching this video before she'd ever heard the word auto kind of fiat file said out loud. You know what I mean? And in the previous video we watched, she didn't understand what I pieced together, which was if that memo, internal memo is true. Um, it was not calling people who reject trans women sexual racist. It was comparing the lack of interest in trans women or dismissing all trans women saying, I'm never going to be attracted to a trans person to people who say, I don't date black people, for example. I don't like that comparison or that particular conversation, but I think that's what was pr probably trying to be said more than anything, right? They weren't creating a new term to describe something to get what they wanted. They were using a term that already exists to compare it to one that doesn't really quite exist, right? Um, that's what I got from it. And I feel the way I feel about her videos as I did about Blair White's videos, where I'm like, you know, they don't require a ton of research. You just have to kind of like sit there and postulate and talk about wokeness, say wokeness and talk about how much you hate it, <laughs> you know, over and over and over again. And people will click and they'll watch, you know, <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. That's kind of what it is. You know what I mean? It, it requires very little. Um, and that's kind of frustrating because I feel like, like, if I were on her side, I feel like I would have done a better autogynephilia video. <laughs> We've talked about cross-dressing and misogyny. We've talked about that. I like, that's a thing. It is definitely a fucking thing. Like, and I will never fucking deny it. It's just, there's a lot of conflation happening and I don't love it. So anyway, that is kind of me watching <laughs> some Ariel Scarcella videos. I think I've exhausted the point. Um, I'm going to leave you guys with that and, um, hopefully you guys will check in for another video. I filmed this on Twitch, um, live with people giving me their thoughts and things as I go along. If you want to follow me on Twitch, you should do that. Just like look my name up or whatever. You should find it. Like, I don't know if you know this about me, but like I'm online and I'm like a person who makes content on the internet. So like I should be pretty easy to find, I think. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to go. Yeah. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.